Hey everyone, hey Patreon backers. So I'm joined by Patrick Lathan again. Patrick has been busy on whatever this octopus is for the last couple of weeks. Actually, it might even be kind of technically last couple of months at this point. Yeah. Um, I don't know where that other motherboard is, but we, we started with a dual socket X79 board from AliExpress, right? And yeah. now we have moved on to an SRX, but I, I don't know, what's, let's do the top level first, I guess. I think maybe the case is worth mentioning first. Yeah, um, so the case is probably the oldest part of this equation. This is the, the Case Labs um, sample that they sent us spring of last year, I think. So is this a, an IO, a PCIe cover um, that you're using to secure? Yes. <laughs> okay. It's very sensitive. We'll get some B-roll of that. Yeah. So there's, I, I haven't looked too closely at this, but there's a very long radiator screw going through the motherboard out the back, through foam, through a PCIe cover, and then there's a hex nut on the other side. It's only a radiator Why? screw. Why? In your minds. If you put it in a motherboard, it's a motherboard screw. <laughs> That's true. So why is, and why are there zip ties? Uh, well, when we, well, we ordered the sample. Um, you filled out the, the sheet for ordering it. Um, yes. And there was an option for an extended motherboard tray that would theoretically support motherboards this large. Um, we may have even selected it, I don't know. We may have selected it, but it's impossible to check because Case Labs is out of business. Yes. Um, and, and this may have been one of the last cases they ever shipped. Cause yeah. We got it within a couple of weeks of them announcing that they were shutting down. So I think it's, do you remember, is it an SMA 800? Is that the name it's of it? It's an SMA 8-A because okay. it's the second revision of that case. Okay. So that's the case. I mean, it's a massive Case Labs case. It's almost entirely aluminum, I think. Uh, yeah, they all aluminum construction. Obviously, these are not aluminum, but everything right. else seems like it is. And I think what took so long for ours was the powder coating on the blue, because I had ordered it at the beginning of the year, and they I think they shut down around May or June or something. Yeah. And last year. Uh, so anyway, it's a Case Labs case. We have a review coming up of the case. And then we decided to use it for our project, which started as a dual X79, like, what are they called, like, Huanan board? Yeah, um, we had one Xeon from Andrew's uh, editing and rendering system. Yeah. Um, and... 12-core uh, 2697. 2697 V2. V2. Um, and you had seen cheap dual socket X79 boards on AliExpress. Uh, and since we already had one of those CPUs, we wanted to try out buying a cheap motherboard and seeing if we could put together a cool system with that. Um, and this was in like January or December, I think. Yes. Uh, so we ordered the board and put it all together and it did not boot. Yeah. Um, and it took five weeks for the board to get here. Yes. Uh, and then we looked around for other consumer boards that were compatible with those CPUs because we thought maybe the issue was um, the BIOS hadn't been patched to support CPUs of that uh, right. of that type. So we ended up with the EVGA SRX, yes, which is a follow-on to the EVGA SR2. And we have another video you guys will see soon enough where I, I talk briefly about how this motherboard is really like a, a tragic point in EVGA's history. Yeah. Um, there aren't a lot of consumer boards built for this generation of Xeon. Um, there's a lot of server boards, obviously, but since these Xeons are locked, the, they're kind of limited as far as like overclocking interest yeah. um, or gaming interest. And it was, I mean, the SR2, Kingpin had uh, an LN2 pod on the chipset, like a special LN2. So it was an overclocking platform, the, the one previous to this. And EVJ thought this would be an overclocking platform. So they way overbuilt the SRX. Mm -hmm. It's a really high end board. And then it came out and all the CPUs were locked. Yeah. So EVGA really got screwed. And this was the last one they had in their US warehouse. It was an RMA model. And so building on our storyline, we ended up with the, the AliExpress X79 board. Mm -hmm. And we thought that was a BIOS issue. So we got this board from EVGA and then we weren't, it still wasn't booting. Yeah, so at that point we thought maybe the issue was that one of the, the CPU we already had from Andrew that we had bought used um, yeah. was an engineering sample, which is already a little bit 
sketchy because you're not supposed to sell engineering samples, but right. we had bought one from somewhere. Um, and the other, the second CPU we had bought was just a normal Retail. consumer model. Um, so we were thinking maybe something was weird with the engineering sample. Maybe it didn't, uh, uh, there was some kind of like checksum that it was doing that it wasn't, right. it wasn't matching them up. Um, so we talked to Intel and Intel agreed to help us out and send a consumer model Wh that which, matched up with the letters and everything. Yeah, which was amazing because uh, contrary to popular belief, you know, Intel doesn't just have stacks and stacks of CPUs that their PR people can send out. Like, yeah. once they send them out, that's it. So to find a CPU from however long ago this was, I think it's like a 2013 or something, I don't remember. 2013, yeah. And yeah. specifically not in an engineering sample, right. um, which is what they would have to give out in the first place. Usually. Yes, so very rare and lucky that Intel helped us out with that. Uh, still didn't work after all that. So long story short, we... I guess you found a, a thread that was updated as recently as December, December of last year, yeah. for a board from around 2013 or 14, I guess. Yeah. So we're not the only ones trying to boot two 2697v2s <laughs> in an EVGA SRX. There's one um, other person. Two other people. Okay. <laughs> Both of them were in that thread. Um, and they claimed that they had fixed the issue by using ECC memory, which should not be a requirement. Um, but we should mention all of these CPUs and all of these boards were booting with one CPU in the yeah. primary socket. So all the CPUs were working, all the boards were working, all of them were working with non-ECC memory, but not in dual socket right. configuration. And um, because this is an RMA board and we didn't know the exact reason, that was another question mark of, like, okay, so maybe it's the motherboard. Yeah. At which point we would just have to keep syncing you know, two hundred dollars at a time into the project until we've bought every permutation possible. Um, but instead, the the people in that thread said that ECC memory fixed it, and we spent what like fifty, 50 bucks, bucks yeah. on on thirty two gigs of ECC memory, and it got here in two days, and now it boots. Yes. So after all those months, and it's updating Windows. Yeah. Um, so there's a decent chance that that other X79 board, um, like X79, I think it's mm. C602 right. chipset technically, um, there's a decent chance that that will also boot with these CPUs. And so now we have two dual socket boards and three CPUs. And, and I bought a single socket X79 yeah. board in China, just because why not yeah. at this point. So yeah, um, I do have, to, this is one of our I think best looking PC builds we've ever done. We should send photos of this to Kyle for Pit My PC. Uh, so we've got an X62 radiator on top with the cables meticulously routed through a fan hole. Mm -hmm. and then uh, an NDXT 1200 watt power supply on the bottom, which is not seated and has its back half sitting outside of the case. Better thermals that way. It's better, yes, it's better thermals. This is whatever. An H115i, maybe. Whichever heatsink was in a box yes. and not being used currently. Yeah, so two sockets, two CLCs, uh, a video card that's supported only by the PCIe slot under it, mm -hmm. and zip ties for the board, <laughs> PCIe socket cover in the back, we'll get, again, B-roll of. So yeah, that's, um, that's why you watch us, because we're professionals. And this is what we've come up with. Uh, anyway, it's been a fun project. Um, probably, probably not, uh, it would have been ideal to not be this involved, but it is working now, I think. Yes. And the end result will be a video, maybe two, and then hopefully a compression platform to just compress B-roll, because we're gonna have, uh, I guess it'll be 48 threads. Yeah. So might as well put them to, to work. And we have 12 memory slots on here. I yeah. think this platform supports up to like 700 something gigs of memory, theoretically. Yeah. Not this board necessarily, but the, right. the CPUs. And the memory is pretty cheap now. DDR3 ECC mm -hmm. is not expensive. But yeah, so that's the project. That's what Patrick's been working on. And uh, he was very excited to get the memory in today. And we weren't let down. It does work. So. Um, anyway, you get, you get the exclusive first look on that. It'll be a little while before we finish this content. So you'll have a early preview for a week or two before we get anything done. But case reviews coming up, 
the full content piece coming up after that, and then maybe a separate look at the Dual X79 uh, Juan and motherboard we bought. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time. <laughs>